Hi YouTube, today I want to talk to you about an alternative for Raspberry Pis. And here on my first slide you can see a diagram showing the prices for various Raspberry Pi models. I've got them from a random Raspberry Pi seller with reasonable prices. And here you can see we have, you can get a Raspberry Pi Zero with Wi-Fi for about 10 euros and the latest model, a Raspberry Pi 4 with 2 gigabytes of RAM for about 37 euros. But if you just buy a Raspberry Pi, you can't use it because for using a Raspberry Pi, you will need a power adapter, you will need a SD card to put your operating system on it and you will maybe need a housing for it. And if you are using a Raspberry Pi Zero, you will need some additional adapters to connect USB devices or a HDMI monitor to it. So if you sum it up, you, it, you will get a little bit different picture. So now you have to spend almost 30 euros on a Raspberry Pi Zero and about 16 euros for later models of the Raspberry Pi, which is quite a lot. For 16 euros you can get a used workstation PC. But Raspberry Pis have some advantages over work, um, workstation PCs. One advantage is they are much more smaller, they use less power, and they have IOs to, uh, to um, connect sensors to them or to control LEDs or motors, for example. But if you just mind the first two points, um, the tiny size and less power consumption, maybe I find a reasonable cheap alternative to Raspberry Pis. So today I want to discuss with you if used Finn clients can be a cheap Raspberry Pi alternative. But first let me explain what Finn clients are. Finn clients are small PCs with limited hardware and they were used in corporations where the employees have to do a lot of office work or accessing databases and they don't get a laptop or a full-sized workstation. All they get is a thin client on which a minimal operating system is installed and on boot up they will connect to a terminal server and they will use a remote desktop protocol such as RDP or VNC and so you're working on the terminal server, all the calculations and program execution is done on the terminal server and you can control it from within your thin client. And because a remote, um, a remote desktop protocol doesn't need so much resources like a heavy word processing program, for example, it's okay that thin clients only have limited hardware. And because of limited hardware, thin clients can be a lot smaller than full-size workstations and they can be cooled without fans because they don't getting so hot because yeah, you don't have so much power in it. So now let's look at possible Raspberry Pi use cases. I've already mentioned you can use a Raspberry Pi to access GPIOs like LEDs, sensors, motors. You can use them as servers like web servers, file servers, music servers and so on. You can use them for home automation to control your light over Modbus for example and you can use them for process visualization. Yeah, these are typical use cases. And for these three use cases down here Maybe I think client is a good alternative. So I went on eBay looking for used thin clients and finally I bought this one, a Fujitsu Futro S700, which costs me 15 euros including shipping and a power supply. And for this price I get a PC with a single core AMD x86 processor, 2 GB RAM and a 2GB mSATA SSD. Let's look at the I.O. We have two USB ports here, two ports for microphone and audio, a power on button, 
on the back side we have a serial port, power in, two, um, two ports for a monitor, four more USB ports, an Ethernet port, two PS2 ports for mouse and keyboard, and two more audio jacks. So the I.O. is quite okay. We can connect a lot of USB devices to it. And here you would have the possibility to expand it with an extra PCI or PCI Express card so you can get a second Ethernet port for example. And let's look at the size of my Futro. Here I've put it on a piece of paper and you can see the thin client is smaller than the piece of paper and it's about 5 cm high so it's quite small. So now let's compare it to two Raspberry Pis. And I will compare it to a Raspberry Pi 1 and a Raspberry Pi 3B because I own these two Raspberry Pis. So the CPU. On Futro we have a single core AMD x86 CPU running at 1.2 GHz. The Raspberry Pi 1 has an ARM V6 CPU single core running with 700 megahertz and the Raspberry Pi 3B has a quad core um, ARM V8 CPU running at 1.2 gigahertz. The RAM on my fruit row you can buy it with one or two gigabytes of DDR free RAM, but the RAM is repla replaceable on a SO DIMM stick. And I've read on the internet you can use four gigabyte RAM sticks and the process. So PC should still work fine. On the Raspberry Pi 1 you have half a gigabyte and on the Raspberry Pi 3 you have one gigabyte. Low power DDR2 RAM. The so storage on my Futro you can have storage from 1 to 8 gigabytes on a MSATA SSD. Mine has 2 gigabyte which is barely enough for a Linux operating system running a X server and i3. But you can expand the RAM um, with bigger MSATA SSDs for 10 to um, 15 euros you will get a 16 gigabyte MSATA SSD which should be enough for your system and you can even get MSATA to SATA adapters and use normal drives with this thin client. For the Raspberry Pis you have to use a SD card for storage. Okay, let's look at here. I have listed supports, but I won't talk about it much here. Only important thing is, of course, if you want to access GPIOs, Raspberry Pi is a better choice because think lines normally don't have GPIOs. Some of them have a parallel port, which would give you 12 outputs and 5 inputs. But in general, if you're interested in GPIOs, a Raspberry Pi is a better choice than a think client. Now let's talk about power consumption. My Futro has an idle power consumption of 9 watts and the maximum power consumption is 19 watts. And the maximum power consumption of a Raspberry Pi 3B is 7 watts. So of course the Futro takes 3 times more um, power than a Raspberry Pi 3B. But if you compare this to a full-size workstation PC, it's not too much. It's still okay if you want to run the system 24-7. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about performance. For this, I thought about two simple performance tests. The first test is adding some random numbers, and the second one is to create a plot. And let me show it to you on my main machine here. So I have written a small program, C program, which will just add 100 million float random values in the range minus 500 to 500. And at the end it will print out the result. And I'm interested in the time it takes to execute this program. So I've compiled it to um, the executable test. And here with the time command I'm measuring the time um, the executable takes. So let's do it here. And here on my main system, okay, I get a value about one second here, or 1.1 seconds.
and I did this on all pre devices on my Futro it took 10.7 seconds on my Raspberry Pi 1 it took almost a minute and on my Raspberry Pi 3B it took 10.2 seconds okay the second performance test is I have a table stored on my PC containing the weather data of Berlin from the last eight days and what I wanted to do was I want to plot it. So I wrote a simple Python script which will read in my table with the weather data and then will generate a plot using PyPlot. And I was interested in the time it takes to create this jar. So let's execute it. Here on my main machine it, it doesn't take a second and as an output I will get a nice image. This nice image showing the temperature in Berlin of the last eight days. And I ran the test on my two Raspberry Pis and my Fin client and here is the result. On my Fin client this took 2.4 seconds, on my Raspberry Pi 1 it took over half a minute and on my Raspberry Pi 3B it took 2.2 seconds. Okay, so this will give you a brief overview about the performance. And uh, the single core performance of the Futro is comparable to the single core performance of a Raspberry Pi 3B. And the Futro is better than the Raspberry Pi 1 in this case here. So as a little summary, Advantages of using a fin client instead of a Raspberry Pi is you got bigger RAM for every Raspberry Pi up to Raspberry Pi 3. Raspberry Pi 4 can have bigger RAM than this fin clients. The CPU performance is better than a Raspberry Pi 1 and comparable to the single core performance of a Raspberry Pi 3B. It's cheaper than a Raspberry Pi even if you buy a extra MSATA SSD you have more USB ports and you have a x86 architecture which means you can compile your programs on your main machine and put them then on your fin client and you don't have to cross compile. Some disadvantages is you have barely no GPIOs, you have a higher power consumption compared to a Raspberry Pi and you have only a weak single core CPU. But if you want to have a hardware for a simple server or for a simple vis visualization or um, home automation controller, maybe a thin client could be a good choice. So that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.